So I want to go now to Democratic Congressman Ted Lieu. Uh, he was there for the questioning, and, and uh, you appear in this transcript many times, uh, Congressman, obviously on the Judiciary Committee. So I, I know there were 155 different times you asked questions she didn't answer as a committee, but I actually want to start with some of what we did learn. Uh, you know, your chairman had said we learned a lot. Uh, Congressman Cicilline last night said you all learned a lot about things before the uh, before the president took the White House. So let me start with uh, with one of them, and uh, this is the, the one I want to start with here uh, is the the order to uh, Corey Lewandowski, right? Go to Corey Lewandowski and tell him to get Jeff Sessions to unrecuse himself, which Sarah just referenced. So the transcript on this part uh, reads, Congressman uh, Chairman Nadler speaks sitting here today. Do you find it concerning that the president asked Mr. Lewandowski to deliver a message to the attorney general? Ms. Hicks, concerning would not be the word I would use to describe how I view that. Chairman Nadler, well, in any way, problematic. Ms. Hicks, I view it as odd. What, what happened at that moment? What do you take away from her saying, not saying concerning, but odd? Well, clearly that was an odd incident, but it's more than that. It was actually the Trump administration trying to obstruct justice. As the Mueller report points out, uh, basically Corey Lewandowski was uh, trying to get uh, Jeff Sessions to unrecuse himself uh, from uh, the Russia investigation, and that was to allow Jeff Sessions to have more control over the investigation. And the Mueller report lays that out. Hope Hicks basically uh, confirms uh, that that incident, in fact, happened. And she just, you, why do you think she would say odd and not concerning? She just thought concerning had pejorative implications and odd didn't? Or well, did you? Yes, that is my uh, reading of why she said it that way. Hmm. And I just want to note that there was so much more information she could have given had the Department of Justice and White House officials not objected 155 times to the testimony. So I want to ask you about something else on the uh, on the hush money payments. Uh, she was asked and she answered pay uh, questions about some of those payments because they, they happened, a part of that story happened again before uh, the election uh, payments to Karen McDougal and uh, Stormy Daniels. Uh, so from the transcript, Congressman Jackson Lee asks Hope Hicks, did Mr. Trump ever direct you to make public statements about the hush money payments during the campaign? Ms. Hicks, I was directed to make a public statement denying that a relationship existed between Mr. Trump and a woman named Karen McDougal. Jackson Lee follows up. Did you ask the president whether that was true? Ms. Hicks, not to my recollection. Do you believe her? Uh I don't believe her because that was such a huge fact that she was repeating on behalf of Donald Trump, and it turned out to be a massive lie. Now, we also did ask her uh, about the hush money payments when she realized that it was a lie. She was not able to talk about that because she got while she was uh, at the White House, and they objected to everything about her tenure at the White House. But she did confirm that, essentially, Donald Trump directed her to make this massive lie to the American people. Right. And, of course, Donald Trump knew uh, that was a lie. So whether she followed up or not, he, he knew that at that time. So, okay, 155 different times your committee says Hope Hicks did not answer questions yesterday. Uh, and, and this went on and on. So let me give another example on this. Trump uh, talking uh, when he tried to have the former White House counsel, Don McGahn, get rid of special counsel Robert Mueller. So uh, Congressman Deutsch asks, did the president tell you that he was making those calls to Mr. McGahn? Um, Mr. Perpera, one of her lawyers, objection. Deutsch, did you ever learn Mr. McGahn was considering resigning after that weekend as a result of the president's calls? Objection. Uh, and it continues. Objection, objection, objection. Aaron, oh, sorry, I think, so, yeah, I, I, I just said it continues objection, objection, objection. You were getting no answers. That is correct. And I want to say that the unprecedented obstruction by the Trump administration isn't just to the Mueller report. It's to everything. So, for example, we want to find out why is the Trump administration suing to eliminate health care coverage for Americans with pre-existing conditions? Can't get that. We want to know answers about this census questions. Mm. Can't get that. And I hope Hicks' testimony, they came up with this absurd claim of absolute immunity, which does not exist. No courts have ever found it. And just today, the GOP's own star witness at a judiciary hearing said that this absolute immunity uh, does not exist. So, you know, Republicans say that you and others in your party were making a mockery of the hearing. Uh, you know, they, they, things like this, they point to, this is you. On your first day of work at the White House, was it a sunny day or a cloudy day? Yeah. <coughs> Mr. Papura directs her, you can answer. Hicks, it was a cloudy day. You, during your tenure at the White House, where would you normally have lunch? Papura, 
you can answer, she says at my desk. Uh, and then, uh, you know, you continue to, well, where was your desk? And then there's an objection. What do you right. say uh, when they say you were making a mockery of this? Uh, I was pointing out the absurdity of their absolute immunity objections. Uh, they wouldn't even allow us to uh, ask uh, where her desk was located. So I just wanted to test that and see if they would even ask, uh, allow us to ask, you know, was it a sunny day or not on her first day of work? Uh, they actually, that was the one question they really uh, allowed to get through, and that's just highlighting how absurd their absolute immunity claims are. We're setting this up for litigation. They're going to get destroyed in court. We're going to call Hope Hicks back. So essentially, all she did is basically jack up her legal fees. She can't uh, escape answering these questions in the future. So when the president said she was terrific and did a terrific job, you say? Well, she did a terrific job listening to the Department of Justice officials who objected on her behalf. But soon they're not going to be able to do that because we're going to win this case in court. All right. Thank you very much.